Welcome to Latrobe here for yet another Steelers training camp. This is Steelers Live and I am Lindsay Petruni. I will be filling in for Missy Matthews during this Steelers training camp, bringing you Who? this Steelers <laughs> coverage. While she's on vacation. Missy is not on vacation <laughs> yes, she labs. Is. No, yes, she's she. not. She is on maternity leave. So I'm <laughs> Lindsay Petruni. Very excited to be here with these two. She'd rather Bob, deal Larry with her Olam, biological Mike kids than I'd just like kids. to make one, an one announcement in your honor. Now playing first base for the Yankees in place of Pip, <laughs> Gehrig, number three, Gehrig. Well, I'm really happy to be here with you guys and really excited to be here at St. Vincent. So I am just really excited. I'm from Pittsburgh and grew up a Steelers the fan. So Beaver, the county, Beaver, Beaver County. Never hurts to have another Beaver County in among us. <laughs> I'm a county girl, so happy to be here with you guys. And it'll be a fun couple weeks from what I hear. Oh, you have, you've not been misinformed. <laughs> calm especially of, calm working with you storm. two. Yes. Especially well, working with you two. So, yeah. uh, so to kick things off, uh, the Steelers signed their first round pick, Terrell Edmonds, today. Yeah, and um, you know, it, to me, it was always just a matter of time. I mean, the last Steelers first round pick who did not report uh, in time for the start of training camp was Ben Roethlisberger in 2004. And, you know, with the, the new CBA that was ratified in 2011 with the slotting, uh, you know, and all of that, it really uh, has made rookie holdouts uh, kind of obsolete. Uh, I just think that the only thing, in my opinion, that prevented this signing from happening a lot earlier was probably the Le'Veon Bell negotiations that were likely occupying a lot of Omar Khan's time. Kind of appropriate, though, uh, since we're here just on campus an hour or so and camp's ready to open and the number one pick gets a little moment in the sun, the signing announced. This is a guy that impressed everybody in the springtime stuff. That, of course, is football in shorts. But Terrell Edmonds is a guy, uh, football in pads is his thing. Uh, he, his reputation is that of a physical player first and foremost. And uh, when minicamp was closing, he was talking about how he couldn't, uh, he, was, he was very eager to get up here and put the pads on and really show people what he can do. I'm looking forward, as I'm sure just about everyone is, to seeing exactly what that is and uh, in what capacity. But heading back to Bell and the Steelers, they were unable to come to a long-term deal. July 16, 3 p.m. has come and gone, obviously. So going back to the those contract negotiations, Bell will play on the franchise tag in 2018. What are your thoughts on, on Le'Veon? You, you know, we saw this a year ago and it worked out really well. Le'Veon Bell was his all pro self, even though uh, he didn't do anything in the spring and didn't do anything up here at St. Vincent. But, uh, you know, Lab, maybe I'm looking for something to worry about, but uh, I'm old school enough to believe that there actually is a point to training camp and it helps prepare an individual and a team. And uh, I'm, I was a little surprised things went as smoothly as they did last year, given everything that led up to the season. And I'm wondering, can Le'Veon Bell really miss all the major prep work and be an all-pro again? Yeah, I mean, you know, things went fairly smoothly last year, uh, but Le'Veon did get off to a slow start. And, and as a result, so did the offense and, and a lot of the phases that, you know, he contributes to heavily. Uh, what I'm thinking of in particular are, is his role uh, in the passing game. I think that that really picked up uh, later on in the regular season. So, you know, I do think that while it wasn't that bad last year in terms of the impact of him missing all of this time, I don't think you could count on that as something that, you know, what will happen every year. So there is some coordination uh, that has to take place uh, between Le'Veon and Ben when he's a receiver, between Le'Veon and the offensive line when he's a runner. And I just don't think you can you know, take that for granted to the degree that you would label it unnecessary. And uh, so we're going to have to see how this works out. I do think, though, that it is going to be a repeat of last summer where he won't be here at all. Uh, he won't play in, he won't be uh, on the roster for any of the preseason games and he will show up Labor Day, sign the tender, practice a couple days, then go to Cleveland. Excited to see what this is going to mean though for Connor and Samuels though, this camp. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, um, you know, incumbent upon those guys to show enough uh, on the fields here 
to give the coaches the confidence that they have uh, real alternatives. I mean, that was to me one of the problems with last summer was James Conner was injured, uh, missed virtually all of the off season, and then he came out here, sustained another minor injury, and had to stand on the sidelines too much to be able to contribute early in the season. Um, he's going into a second season now. I think his body and his mind should be much more uh, prepared for what the demands of an NFL training camp on a running back. Uh, Jalen Samuels, I think, now becomes James Conner in terms of he needs to be able to keep himself on the field to continue to assimilate into the offense and engender the kind of confidence from the coaching staff that they can feel like they could turn to him in Cleveland if Le'Veon gets off to a slow start. I don't think that that existed last year, and that's why they stuck with him. So, um, yeah, there, it, there's going to be some interesting things to watch for in terms of the trickle-down effect of Le'Veon not being here. Yeah, and the health point is real interesting with Samuels because he's a guy who's already turned heads. He showed up with a, a reputation for being able to catch the ball out of the backfield and not just as a running back, but the guy who can do some receiver stuff. He played H-back and tight end in college, among other things. And uh, he made catches that veterans took note of in, in the springtime stuff, OTAs and minicamp. But uh, to me, at least, he looked like a guy who wasn't maybe in as good a shape as he needed to be. Probably thought he was when it started. And they Most learned, of them do. They learned <laughs> quick. Right. Uh, Mike Tomlin's advice to the first-year guys, the rookies, is always be in the best possible shape you can be, the best shape of your life. Hopefully he took that to heart. Uh, he'll get a lot of opportunity out here. Uh, hopefully he's uh, in peak condition to take advantage of each and every one of them. Let's get into the schedule a little bit here. There are 14 open practices here. So the, the 2018 training camp schedule here at St. Vincent College. Uh, the players have to report tomorrow by 4 p.m. And then starting Thursday, July 26th, that's when practices will be open to the public. All the way through Tuesday, July 31st is the first day that will be the players' day off. So starting Thursday all the way through Monday, July 30th, players will be here. O practices will be open to the public. And then uh, Thursday, August 2nd, practice open to the public. Friday, August 3rd is that, that Friday night lights at, at Latrobe Memorial Stadium. Uh, and then just keeps going all the way through uh, that, that game at the Eagles. Uh, and then the, some of the highlights here coming up. The, the first practice in pads is gonna be this Saturday. And uh, as I mentioned, that Friday night lights at Latrobe Memorial Stadium on August 3rd. And then the final practice open to the public is gonna be Tuesday, August 14th. So a lot of oppor a opportunities <laughs> for fans no, to come out and my, and my tears out will be shed training camp on here. Thursday and Friday when we got to go through more mini camp <laughs> which is what it is it's out here on these beautiful fields but it's no pads it's acclimation period you know your favorite CBA can you wait till Saturday I mean I'd, I'd like hey I'm not hitting so I'd like to, to start <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> but you know one of the things that happens you know, with some of these young guys, you know, Jalen Samuels, potentially this this summer, James Conner, last summer, is they're not prepared for how how quickly it turns, you know, how, how quickly it gets more intense and the demands on the body, even though, you know, when we get Tunch and Wolf at this table, they'll tell, talk about how easy it is now. But, um, you know, it's it's something that rookies almost have to go through in order to be able to come out on the other side um, and be productive right from the beginning. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to see, because there's a lot of guys, we'll, we'll talk about some of them in the, in the uh, ensuing shows here, but there's a lot of young guys, you know, you mentioned Terrell Edmonds, a lot of young guys that the Steelers are gonna be counting on for 2018 and for these guys to be able to fulfill that promise and live up to those expectations, they gotta be out on the field out here consistently and if they're not cam sutton last year already burns a couple of years ago i mean this is a list of names these guys who uh were not able to practice daily out here and then it just retarded the beginning of their rookie seasons all right we're going to go to a quick break here when we come back we'll see what you guys are most looking forward to at 2018 training camp
Welcome back to Steelers Live. We're here at Latrobe and St. Vincent College. It's the calm before the storm. The, St the Steelers players have to be here at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Guys, what are you most looking forward to at training camp this year? Defense in a word, but uh, specifically uh, interesting that they have decided to flip-flop Bud Dupree and T.J. Watt. Watt now going into his second year. And uh, the defensive coordinator, Keith Butler, Explain some of the reasoning behind that in the springtime. Uh, basically, they thought Bud Dupree uh, was getting past the quarterback too often. Uh, if he's rushing from the other side, uh, that wouldn't necessarily occur. Uh, T.J. Watt, very good at dropping into coverage, getting his arms up, getting his hands on balls. Uh, an interception at Cleveland to kick things off last year. Hopefully, we see more of this kind of stuff this year. And uh, you know, they set a team record for sacks last year, and Keith Butler doesn't care where you get them, but you can always get more. And, and Bud Dupree, a guy who can get to the quarterback more than he has so far in his career, so it's going to be interesting to me to see how that plays out. That's just one of many uh, kind of chess piece moves. Uh, several of them are yet to be revealed. I assume they will be by September. But uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, who plays where stuff going on uh, in this training camp, uh, which I'm going to find interesting. You know, for me, I, I don't know that I've sufficiently beaten the Le'Veon Bell horse enough until it's dead. And so I'm going to stick with it here a little bit more. You know, Mike, you mentioned uh, chess pieces and, and things of that nature. I, I believe that that also needs to take place on offense, even though, uh, you know, the bulk of the of the unit is, is returning intact. Um, you know, in addition to, we, we talked in the first segment about guys like James Conner and Jalen Samuels and even Steven Ridley, uh, how they may be able to uh, show themselves out here on these fields to maybe, first of all, make the roster, uh, carve themselves out a role, and then also uh, engender enough confidence in the coaching staff to get themselves on the field early if Le'Veon Bell goes through uh, an acclimation period uh, of his own early in the regular season. But the other thing I th I'm kind of interested in seeing is how Randy Feekner maybe tries to uh, prepare for that eventuality and uh, find out what those other guys might be able to do well if they have to go to a different running back, uh, how he might be able to utilize Le'Veon Bell maybe in ways that don't emphasize the rust that he's likely to come to uh, the regular season with, and just maybe how, you know, some of the other intricacies, Mike, you mentioned Jalen Samuels. Uh, there's some interesting pieces, Juju Smith-Juster, uh, and how those might be incorporated uh, as well. I, I really I really think this Le'Veon Bell thing, this guy is uh, certainly, in my mind, the premier running back in the league. Uh, he's one of the uh, premier players on this roster, and any, any kind of success that this team has to have, I don't believe happens uh, without that guy right there uh, getting back to his all-pro status for the third time in his young career. So how this all shakes out, I think the foundation has to be laid here, uh, both schematically and, you know, in terms of practice reps and those kind of things. And, you know, I'll, I'm going to be watching that. Is there anything else that you want to mention before we kind of wrap up this show? How about one quick question I have for both of you. I'm interested to know, and we don't obviously don't have to get into the schematics right now, but which position are you most interested in for this particular training camp and seeing some of the positional battles? You want the low hanging fruit or should I grab it? No, you go ahead. Uh, <laughs> the safety position and uh, you know, how many on the field mm -hmm. at one time, where do they line up? But, but beyond that, the first thing we heard in the off season, again, a strange year defensively last year, a team record for sacks, but big plays against with regularity. And uh, the first thing we heard in the offseason was communication was the bugaboo, getting guys lined up, getting guys on the same page, uh, getting everybody doing what they're supposed to be doing at the same time. If they can get that done, they think they can play defense. Uh, they went out and got uh, players that they believe have a history or the potential to be communicators. Can't have what happened too many times last year, and that's – uh, guys being left wide open and big plays being made easy for the other team. They're going to they're gonna get you a few times because everybody's yeah. good. You can't make it easy for them. And for this defense to really uh, carry its weight this year, it's got to make things a lot harder on the opposition. Yeah, and I'll just stick with that and piggyback on what you were saying a little bit. You know, one of the things, uh, and Rod Woodson said this on 
uh, I believe it was NFL Network at some point during the offseason, that the Steelers' defense needs to find more playmakers. And I, I couldn't agree more, especially when it comes to interceptions by defensive backs. And, you know, what? that's one of the things that, that you have to develop. I, I think that Joe Hayden being here for this entire training camp and, and the preseason I think is going to help. Uh, Artie Burns needs to get back to – uh, making some of the kinds of plays that he made as a rookie. Uh, the Steelers need to find uh, a way to get more takeaways. Mike, you mentioned they led the NFL in sacks last year. They can always have more. They weren't close to leading the NFL in interceptions last year, and they definitely need more. A lot of the yards and things that you give up as a defense, you erase with a takeaway. And so that's what I, I'm going to be watching to see if we see any inklings of some players here uh, maybe showing that they can maybe fill that void a little bit. All right. Well, the players report tomorrow by 4 p.m. Mike Tomlin will have a live press conference following the run test on Steelers.com. We don't have a show tomorrow, but we'll be back at 5 p.m. on Thursday. So Steelers live next show will be on Thursday and hope you'll tune we'll in. We'll have to do the run Look test. Look forward to we? seeing you. God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good news. I was glad, I'm glad that hasn't changed. <laughs> Anybody bring a sundial? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you on Thursday.